as digital access in India goes deeper into the country geographically and to different levels of digital literacy, building for these new users poses new challenges. This session will showcase some of the work by Flipkart to enable the next wave of digital users to access, use and trust e-commerce. This session is in partnership with Flipkart Ads. And joining us for the same, we have Mr. Nareen Ravula, VP, Head of Product, Strategy and Deployment, Flipkart. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Nisha. So it's uh, really exciting to be part of the uh, MMA session uh, today. And uh, I'm very excited to talk about a topic that is really near and dear to us, which is to enable commerce for the next wave of uh, digital users. So if you move on to the next slide, um, so this is uh, something that we use extensively within Flipkart and we call this the, the digital funnel, right? So Flipkart now is almost a 15 year old company. We are no longer new. Uh, we uh, e-commerce as a market is also well entrenched in India. But if you look at this funnel, uh, there are only about 140 million uh, people who are actually shopping actively online, while there are about 650 million internet users. Um, so really the conversation today that I wanted to have with all of you is, you know, what are some of those things that we need to be working on to get the next 500 million people who are at the top of the funnel to make their way all the way down to the shopping part of it. Uh, and today I will talk to you about uh, five important technologies. Um, here at Flipkart, we are working extensively on them. I think uh, while we are off to a really good start, there is a lot more work for us uh, across each of these uh, dimensions. Uh, and I will like sort of in my brief 15 minutes here, give you a quick overview of them. Starting with voice and uh, vernacular. I think we all know uh, India is a land of uh, many different uh, languages and there is no way we are going to penetrate uh, and uh, get to the next 500 million customers without really making the vernacular languages a key part of everything that we do, right? And today on the Flipkart platform, we support uh, 11 different languages uh, apart from, from English. And it is, uh, and the language support is not just about the, the products themselves, but it is all the, all the rich information that, that exists about the products, whether it is the, the product details, uh, whether it is the, the, the address uh, aspects of it, whether it is the, uh, the user generated reviews, uh, right, which are really important for people to make decisions and to break down those, those barriers. Uh, and we are really excited about the traction that vernacular has received on the platform. Uh, and today, if you look at um, our new users, about one in every three new users actually uses one of these vernacular uh, language options. And once somebody picks a vernacular language option, that is where they spend all their like you know shopping uh, journey, right? They, it's very rare that they that they swap out of it. So so language support uh, and extensive language support uh, across the app is is something that is very important. Um, the next uh, capability that I wanted to talk to you about was, uh, was voice, right? And voice and language is a more natural form of uh, communication. All of us in our offline shopping journey, we, we, this is, this is our, our dominant and primary way of uh, communicating. Uh, and today, if you look at the capability that is enabled on our platform, we have something called a decision assistant, which lets customers not only like, you know, choose and pick uh, a, you know the uh, the particular product that they they are looking for, but also as they progress through their shopping journey, the the decision assistant is able to to guide them. Uh, and the and the voice conversation is not just a sort of a formal uh, you know uh, means of communication. Uh, this is able to accept you know more casual and colloquial use of the language. For example, um, you could go into the app and you could essentially reel out a shopping list, right? You could say, you know, one kg tur dal, half a kg urad dal, right? And the, and the voice assistant is able to like, you know, capture all of that information, not only enabling, uh, you know, voice, but also simplifying your shopping journey, particularly when you're building large baskets, right? So you don't have to like sort of navigate the app, go back and, and, and pick one item at a time. So uh, the progress that we've made with our decision assistant uh, and on voice on the platform uh, is, is substantially uh, uh, higher the past uh, year or so. Um, and one of the things that we are also able to enable is how you know, we 
all colloquially talk right so we're not we no longer just use you know one language right we 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 switch between english hindi there is english uh, and the ability of the app to understand how we naturally speak uh, i i think is 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 critically important and today one in 10 shoppers have actually used the the voice assistant so voice and vernacular as two foundational capabilities uh, for the next 500 million customers the next capability that i wanted to talk about uh, is our supply chain i think uh, many of uh, our probably uh, you know participants here are, are aware of flipkart as a consumer facing app but maybe something that is not as uh, well known is the fact that uh, flipkart actually Op runs and operates one of the largest supply chains in the country, right? So we're talking about the sort of the full-fledged infrastructure and a multi-tier supply chain, uh, which moves, uh, you know, hundreds of millions of uh, of items uh, every year, and, and and that's the that's the kind of scale that that we are operating at. And today, Flipkart supply chain reaches every PIN code. Um, and uh, you know one of the things that we have uh, recently announced was the largest uh, fc not only uh, in the country but one of the largest fcs uh, in all of asia that is capable of uh, of processing and and shipping 1 million items every day right and this is a, an fc in uh, haringata near you know near kolkata and uh, with the ability to store 30 million uh, you know uh, inventory items uh, and a large part of this uh, FC is, is automated. And I'm happy to say that 70% of that automation was actually built and designed in India, right? So it is, it is not just international technologies, but, but India, uh, India-centric uh, technologies that are being championed uh, here. So we are really excited about, uh, you know, championing uh, these and uh, being part of the build, uh, build in India movement. Um, and when we talk about technology, right, I think it is important to make sure that this technology actually uh, is able to be successful in the Indian context, um, uh, right? So, so technologies that actually can can work with our the 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 ROI constraints that we have uh, in India is, is something that is very important, and also technology that solves these like very unique uh, India specific problems, like for example. This is a, a classic problem that we have in uh, with uh, address accuracy. Uh, in in many in many cases, these are not just uh, these are no longer addresses, right? So there are a series of instructions uh, for our delivery personnel, and, and something like this is critically important if you want to reach the next 500 million customers, right? Because the next 500 million customers are not living in in urban communities that are that are easy to reach. Uh, they could be anywhere. Um, and in fact, you know, I was on one of our recent, um, uh, you know, customer runs, right, so along with our supply chain team. And we, we, we exactly ran into this use case where, where our customer who was, a, was a, 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 an attendant in one of the restaurants had, had asked us to meet him at the intersection, uh, a busy intersection. And, and once we got there, he gave us further instructions to make our way through a series of small lanes to the place that he was working at. So this is a, a you know how Flipkart is solving uh, for India with with India specific uh, innovation. So so improving supply chain critically important as we get to the next 500 million customers. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, social commerce. Um, see, we don't expect every single one of the next 500 million customers to themselves show up and, and operate on the app. I think there are still you know, trust barriers and, and we will rely on resellers uh, and, 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 and other uh, folks to, to enable commerce uh, for, for the next set of people who are not comfortable coming on the platform themselves. So one of the things that Flipkart recently launched uh, is a separate app called Shopsy to enable our resellers, right? And so these are resellers who then in turn uh, reach our end customers. They are not only able to help them navigate a, a, a complicated e-commerce app, but they're also able to help them with curation, right? So today, a large e-commerce app like Flipkart has tens of millions of items uh, and, and trying to find the right product um, is, you know, it still takes effort and for to have a, a an intermediary who understands the end consumer much better and is able to curate the, the selection for that customer uh, and then in turn unblock them uh, through various ways, maybe share the uh, share the information about the product on an app that they're familiar with, like, like WhatsApp or so on, or one of the other social media apps. Uh, and then like, you know, help complete the, uh, the transaction, right? So these are some of the things that we are enabling. 
Uh, and through this, we are also enabling many small, uh, you know, small scale uh, entrepreneurs. These could be, you know, homemakers who want to run a side business uh, and enable them to, to be successful as well, right? So th this is something that we've launched and uh, I'm happy to say that, you know, Shopsy uh, has been one of the most successful app launches, not only sort of for Flipkart, but, but in India as a whole, right? It's off to a great start, significant traction uh, as we reach the, the next tier of e-commerce shoppers. The next trend that I wanted to talk about is, uh, is video commerce. Uh, India is already the second largest video market uh, in the world. And we think video is going to be ubiquitous. It's going to be everywhere. Uh, and Flipkart is introducing uh, video across the platform. You're going to increasingly see you know, video as part of our catalog. Uh, and a couple of, uh, you know, really interesting uh, new pilots that we have launched. Uh, the, the first one, which we did uh, around uh, Big Billy and Day last year uh, was live commerce, right? So where you have influencers, not only talking about the product, they're demonstrating the, the, the use of the product and, and they're, they're hosting a live chat uh, for, for their customers, right? So that's the, the screen that you see here on the right. Uh, and something that I am uh, you know, uh, particularly, you know, excited about is, is the, is the uh, pilot on the left where we have enabled haggling, right? So, so haggling and bargaining is a, is a classic uh, Indian uh, activity. Hundreds of millions of uh, customers do this uh, naturally offline uh, and our ability to bring it online and to, uh, to enable our customers to, to bargain uh, with the seller, uh, as you can see here in the in the series of uh, chats that are that are happening, uh, where you know the customer you know wants to know if she can get a better discount if she buys you know two items or if she picks a different color than the one that is being showcased. Uh, so we think you know uh, haggling or uh, bargaining is going to be uh, an important online activity, right? So really excited to bring uh, things that we take for granted offline uh, online. So so video commerce as a as an important technology technology trend. The next, the next one, and, and probably the final one that I wanted to spend my time today talking about uh, is enhancing customer experiences and making them more immersive. I think uh, many of you would have heard uh, the recent buzz around web 3.0, uh, you know, just maybe a 10 second uh, sort of primer on that. So if you think of uh, web 1.0 as the first incarnation of the internet, right? So think of that as, as basically internet uh, uh, looking like a, like a yellow pages or a phone book, right? So it's a, it's a place where you went for information, right? So that was the first phase of the internet, uh, which gave way to the second phase of the internet or web 2.0, which is where we are right now. Uh, which is the more interactive social, uh, you know, internet where, we, you know, the, it led to the rise of uh, so social commerce, uh, you know, chat platforms and, and so on. But in, in, in web 2.0, uh, what you have is, is, is still not immersive, right? So these are all still two dimensional largely. Uh, and, and where we think this is going is web 3.0, where the internet is going to be a lot more immersive you're going to have 3D and augmented reality experiences where the objects that you're you're interacting with online, uh, they are blurred and merged with the physical reality that, that you, you exist in, right? So, so this is, uh, you know, the one of the aspects of Web 3.0. There are other aspects of Web 3.0, for example, uh, you know, the, the blockchain technology enabling decentralization is, is another important trend. And we think a lot of these building blocks are going to come together over the next 10 to 15 years, creating uh, what we call Web 3.0. But, but we already see the, the early, uh, you know, incarnation of that. So today on the Flipkart platform, if you want to do furniture shopping, uh, you could uh, you know, place the 3D image of, of a couch or the item that you are trying to purchase in the space where you want to see it, right? And, and you're able to like, you know, nudge it around, like place it in, the, in, in exactly the right place, uh, see if it, if it fits within the room and if it works within the overall decor that you had planned uh, for the room. And uh, th these types of uh, experiences are, are actually, uh, you know, being adopted very rapidly. Uh, you know, a, a recent stat from our uh, furniture 3D, uh, AR uh, pilot is, you know, we've now had almost a half a billion users, uh, you know, interact with um, yeah, is half a billion visits to, to this particular experience on the platform in a very short period of time, right? So significant adoption uh, for these immersive 
technologies. And maybe you know one final uh, thing to talk about um, on the next slide is uh, you know gaming uh, and, and and filters, right? So so I'm actually a huge believer in gaming and gamification. Uh, it, it is not just a sort of a, a pastime that that we used to have. I think game, gamification uh, and games are going to be part of everything that we do online. Uh, and here uh, we have a, a couple of examples of, of of gamification and filters that we have built. Right, the example on the right is is showcasing uh, a, a, an unboxing video for a for one of our mobile brands. Uh, and the uh, and the filter on the left, uh, you know, is a uh, is something that we did for one of the uh, you know uh, uh, food brands, uh, where you know there's a little bit of a, a an aisle fun run that is being done, right? So these are all uh, new ways in which our our brands and advertisers can can reach the customers, can 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 engage them, uh, and it is not happening you know somewhere else. These are some of the experiences that we are building on e-commerce platforms. Uh, like Flipkart, right? So the combination of these these five different experiences that I talked about uh, are among the ones that are that are really going to bring our next 500 million customers down the digital funnel to where uh, e-commerce is today, and we are really excited uh, to be uh, you know leading that journey down that path. So thank you for for the opportunity and the time today.